they two since I buried my son my son died from the coronavirus as I've mentioned um, but not in the way you think um, human condition is not to be socially isolated and, even, and I heard someone say well it's like summer for these kids it was, it's not like summer for these kids it's just not anybody says it's, it's an idiot this is not summer you have parents who are stressed out because they lost their jobs that's not like summer you got kids who have no interaction with their friends other than through Fortnite and FaceTime. That's not like summer. You have kids who can't go go run off their energy at PE class. They can't get that one hug from their teacher that they needed. Um, there, there's social and emotional challenges beyond comprehension. And we're only going to begin to understand the effects. And it will be incredibly hard to track and incredibly hard to prove my thesis um, because the network effects of how this all happened, the butterfly effect is... It's too complicated, but my belief is uh, that we are in, have a bubble, a social and emotional bubble that's about to burst, and it's been coming for a while. I think Hayden was an incredible kid. He wasn't depressed. Uh, he wasn't uh, someone who uh, moped around. I mean, like any teenager, he was hard on himself at times. Probably a lot, a lot like me, pretty competitive guy. Um, and like anybody, had its own, his own insecurities here and there. Um, my son, the story behind my son, for those who want to know, back in December, he got a brand new monitor for Christmas. That's what he wanted. He was a big, big time gamer, and I got nothing wrong with gaming. Uh, that's what he wanted to play Fortnite. He's an incredible Fortnite player, one of the top for his age in the country. And um, very proud of that gift and, and that one of those wonderful for a couple months right before the fires just start started and back in february like like i used to do when i got mad at uh, mike tyson's punch out or whatever it was um he got mad at fortnite turned around and chunked that controller over his head again just like i used to do and um hit smack in the middle of that monitor broke it and we told him son you know you can't do that I don't care about the monitor, but I care about how you react. It's just you can't do that. When you're not getting another one. Sorry, dude. Um, and, you know, he negotiated and tried every which way to convince us, talking to my, what we call, my, my dad, we call him PP, um, trying to get him to fix it. And he can't fix those new LCD monitors, um, or not cheaply at least. And, um, but we said, you know what, if you, opportunity to, to learn a lesson, do some hard work of your own, do some more chores around the house, you treat your sister nicer, um, and maybe we'll talk about it, we'll get you one. And he held up his end of the bargain. Um, February, Mar March, he worked his butt off, um, did some things around the house, did many things around the house. Was, I could see it, just a wonderful change, and how he treated his sister, which brother and sisters always fight, There's nothing unusual about that, but just learning, he was evolving, he was growing, he was becoming a man, 12-year-old boy. And, uh, you know, a week and a half ago, we had a wonderful day. Um, we're, me and Hayden were supposed to go get haircuts in my office. Um, both of us were getting shaggy as can be. And um, my water in my well went out. And, uh, you know, I needed help to fix it. So I called the smartest guy I know, which was my dad. Um, and I hadn't seen him because of the virus. I hadn't allowed him to go to work. I said, you got to work from home, man. I was worried about my dad, just like everybody else. Uh, but he came over, helped me fix the will. It was a beautiful sunny day. We had a glorious time. Me, Hayden, and him fixing it. Dad even gave him a little